I'm building an EMP, or a device that creates an electromagnetic pulse. But one quick thing before we get into the video. Disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes only. Do not try this at home. If you don't know what an EMP is, that's fine. I'll explain it. Basically what it is is, well, you start with a power source, something like a battery or something, and then that goes through a high voltage transformer, which transforms it into a higher voltage. And then this electricity goes into a coil. And this is, the coil is what creates the electromagnetic radiation that it's delivering. But for the pulse part, we need a pulse generator. So that goes in between the high voltage generator and the coil. Now it's time to find the materials for all of these. For my power source, I'm going with 4D batteries. It's pretty sure this is overkill, but it's fine for what we're doing right now. My high voltage transformer, I'm going with some random one I found on Amazon. Most of them work fine, but this will be generating thousands of volts, so be careful. For my coil of wire, I'm going with just this coil of coax cable that I found in my closet. It should work fine. Now you may be wondering, where's the pulse? So far you just have an electromagnet. That is correct. For the pulse, I'm going with a spark gap. What is a spark gap? Well, it's basically just a gap in the wire for a spark to travel across. Duh, that's what the name is. Now the spark gap makes this device much more dangerous as there will be exposed arcs of plasma on the device. So don't stick your finger in it, otherwise you will get electrocuted and burned. I'm still doing it, because it's easier than any other option I could think of. Right now I gotta test this. So I'm gonna grab this D battery pack. Actually this one has no glue on it. This D battery pack. Um, I need to attach it to this high voltage transformer. So now this is connected. So if I put batteries in here, there will be thousands of volts coming out right here. And this is going to be our example of a spark gap. Alright, I'm ready. Now, I don't know if YouTube's picking up that high pitch noise, but that means it's on. And if I bring these wires closer together, they will spark. And it's kind of loud. See that? Uh, and you might have seen there are multiple sparks. off. As you can see, there were multiple sparks and they were pulsing. That is how we get our pulse. So I think it's time we build a prototype. Let's go. Test of the prototype put together now. I guess this isn't a prototype with the coil. It's fine. Prototype with the button. Let's see. Damn. Uh, I was holding it normally. Did it go through the wire? It might have gone through the wire. I was holding it on the wire. Yeah. 
the camera will focus, you can see the crack kind of in the wire. Yeah. I think it went through there. <laughs> it shocked me. All right. I'm going to be testing this again. I'm not going to hold that. Do not hold that. It is very dangerous. But I'm going to do it from here now, and it's not going to shock me. It works. But testing the spark is not the whole story. We still need the coil for the electromagnetic part of the electromagnetic pulse. This coil is a coil of coax cable that I cut the ends off and it's been hot glued. I have attached a piece of white wire to the end of this side. That's going to be one end of the spark gap. One of these is going to be the other end. And the one that's not the other end will be attached to right here. And that should complete the whole circuit. Let's build it. Attached one end. This still needs to be. This still needs to be almost attached to this, and I need something to hold them in place so they don't go too close or too far. But I'm gonna put this on a piece of cardboard, and I'm actually gonna use this piece of cardboard that uh, is part of the next video that you have not seen yet, unless you're watching my videos backwards. Probably not, because I don't know. I'm gonna be putting it on this piece of cardboard so I don't make the same mistake I already made. And yeah, let's do that. So I think if this will stay, then that's our spark gap. And you can see the whole circuit is the same thing. We have our power source, high voltage transformer, basically a pulse generator, but this is a spark gap, coil of wire, and switch to turn on and off. Now let's see if it actually does anything. All right, I have this set up. Coil is right under this LCD display. And the electromagnetic whatever should alter the LC, the LCs and the LCD. It's a liquid crystal display and the electromagnetic pulse should alter them. So, I mean, let's give it a test. Hope you don't die. Hope it doesn't explode. Just maybe. Oh, I saw a line there. I don't think that was the liquid crystals. Maybe it was something in the circuit board. Uh, let's let run it for longer. Uh, see that? That's what I'm talking about. It's working, but not well enough. I need to make it more powerful. One way I can think of to upgrade this would be to give, to make the coil coil around more times. Now that's limited by the length of this coax cable. It's, I don't know how long it is, but it only coils around a certain amount of times. And if I want to coil around more, one way to do that is to make the wire thinner so it can actually fit more turns in the same amount of space. I have 
this wire right here, it's like, it's called magnet wire. I guess electromagnet could work. I might use this, it's like coated copper, so I have to like scratch off. But no, it's coated in copper. So I have to scratch off the copper. Wait, I don't even know. It's it's not conductive on the outside, so I have to scratch it off to actually get the electricity running through it, which is annoying. I'm, so I might use this, but I might have better wire. Let's look in the, the, the cave of stuff. There's this already in a coil, and I'm pretty sure it's conductive on the outside. I'm gonna try this. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna cut this coax cable. Uh, I almost touched the thingy. Cut this. There we go. Out with the old, in with the new. So I have cut these. There's no exposed wires, yay. I'm gonna use clipper wires for, just to connect the coil. So, I mean, technically it should be better. That's, yeah, let's give it a try. All right, and test. Man, what if I just bring it? I don't wanna, I don't know if I wanna touch that. It's fine. Um, what if I just bring it closer to the monitor? Yeah, this should work better. <laughs> I'm gonna break my monitor, bro. All right, let's see. Oh, yeah. Heh. It's working. Oh, wait, do you see that? That's not good. Inside the wire. Ah. Uh, like, right, right around there. There's a spark in there. Oh. Well, we're back up. Yeah, so, I don't want to break my monitor. Anyways guys, that's gonna be all for today. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. And if you love the video, be sure to subscribe. I will see you guys next time.